Hi guys, welcome to Amy Jade Interviews. On this platform, I partner up with professionals in the field of women's health and wellness to bring you up-to-date, informative and inspiring content. On today's episode, I interview Lexi McPhee. She is a degree-qualified naturopath with a strong interest in healing acne. She says her main passion is helping women struggling with chronic acne to achieve clear, glowing skin, helping to reclaim their confidence. So in this episode, we'll be diving deep into acne, the causes, and how you can best manage, treat, and heal your own acne from a naturopathic perspective. I hope you will enjoy. So I'm here with Lexi, and she's going to be talking to me today all about skincare. And I'm very excited for this interview, as I've been looking at lots of your content for a long time now and learning a lot myself. Um, I just wanted to ask you to like introduce yourself. Who are you, and why do you do what you do? Yeah, so I'm Lexi and I'm a degree qualified naturopath and my special area of interest is in uh, all things skin, but I do focus on uh, hormonal acne, specifically post pill acne. So mm. for all those girls out there who have come off the pill and uh, unfortunately their skin's you know broken out, gone crazy with acne, uh, I'm their person. So people come to see me for a bit of that help on the internal side of things because I think uh, a lot of girls now are starting to realise that with these external skin conditions, there's often an internal imbalance going on that needs to be addressed as well as the, you know, the topical skincare side of things. So, uh, so that's what I do. And, um, and I run my own online practice. So I'm completely online and I'm loving it. Amazing. That would be so good with the challenging times we have going on at the moment as well. People can still get their yep. consultations in. Perfect. Yeah, I'm feeling very lucky that I'm still able to work online and uh, and haven't been impacted too much by the whole situation. So feeling really lucky. Yeah, and that's such an amazing topic as well to keep talking about because that was something I actually really struggled with experiencing as well with that post pill acne. And it's not something people really, you know, think of as a problem or mm. like even consider that that could pot- potentially happen when you get. Yeah, a I didn't. Like, yeah, I didn't. So and, rough. And it's. it's it's crazy because, um, you know, I went on the pill for my acne when I was about 16 mm. and it wasn't until I started studying uh, naturopathy and decided that I didn't want to be on the pill anymore. Mm. Um, took myself off the pill. Didn't even occur to me that my skin was going to go into absolute, you know, a rebound state of acne. Um, I wasn't warned by my doctor. And even, you know, even though I was studying and had all this information about um, the human body, I still wasn't aware that uh, post acne was a thing. So it took took me having to go through it myself to understand uh just how uh debilitating it can be really yeah it really is so would you say that's what kind of inspired you to go on and study your degree of natural health and to really specialize in skincare and other stuff to you know like help people on their own journey it wasn't until I graduated that I started to you know to focus on acne so Mm -hmm. um people ask me all the time how I sort of got into naturopathy and I don't even remember (laughs) such a bad, maybe people have like a really good story. I literally fell into it. Um, I went to the open day. I was always interested in health and, and, you know, herbs and, you know, natural health, that kind of thing. But I never even been to see a naturopath, but I ended up at the open day um, Mm -hmm. for Endeavor college where I studied and just really loved the atmosphere Mm -hmm. and thought, yeah, give it a go. And then five and a half years later, um, I was starting my own practice and, dabbling in a few different areas and sort of just treating whoever was coming to me at the time um, with whatever they were coming to me for. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until about, oh, about a year ago that I thought, why am I focusing on, you know, an area that I have real personal experience with? Um, I've been through it. I know exactly what it's like and, um, and I've done so much research in it. Why not focus on that and share, share that knowledge? So that's how I sort of ended up focusing on skin, Mm -hmm. but it wasn't, um, it didn't drive me to start studying. It was sort of an afterthought, but a very good one because I, it's, I think I've really found my groove now. Yeah. And do you find like a lot, quite a few people sort of come to you with these skincare issues and stuff like that these days, or is it still quite broad what you focus on? Uh, it's 90% um, skin issues like acne. So I still get the odd uh, client here and there who have been referred to me and they'll go, Oh, I know you focus on skin, but can you also help me with X or Y or Z? And, Mm -hmm. Um, so I get a little bit of diversity, but the majority of my practice is on skin because I, uh, put out so much information about it. I think, um, it tends to attract, I tend to attract clients who are interested in the same sort of Mm. thing. Amazing. And so with all this, all these people coming to you with skin problems and 
having talked to so many people about it and through your own knowledge, what do you think is like, you know, some of the triggers and stuff that cause these skin problems? Like why are so many people experiencing acne these days? Uh, well, yeah, again, it depends on the, the condition we're talking about. So if we do focus on acne, um, all acne has some sort of hormonal component, yeah. whether it's uh, a sex hormone driven acne condition or if it's being driven by stress hormones like um you know overexposure to cortisol or adrenaline there's always uh some hormonal element to it but there's sort of three or four big areas that i really focus on and find the main drivers behind acne so one of them being that sex hormone imbalance usually it's uh either testosterone driven especially if the acne is occurring on the jawline and chin or the chest and the back um so testosterone driven acne is really common um, as well. Those premenstrual acne breakouts do have that element of um, estrogen excess. So we're looking at the uh, more traditional, like what we think of as like the female sex hormone. So estrogen, progesterone, fat balance. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, aside from the sex hormones, we're, we're looking at uh, gut health is a really big one. So depending on the presentation of the acne, I often see gut issues coinciding with acne when it's presenting like around the mouth, around the nose, around the lips, um, upper lip as well. So it, it oh, so many things. <laughs> oh, no, it's like, good, how far it's like, oh, yeah. as deep as you can go, because if you don't get down to that, that real underlying uh, layer of what's going on, the acne is just going to keep coming back. So it's really important that people do consider what else is happening in their bodies. Like I think we've become quite um, disconnected from the big picture in terms of our bodies. Like we're not just looking at the skin. We're looking at the skin, the gut, the nervous system, um, blood sugar regulation, sex hormone production, um, mm-hmm. you know, diet, lifestyle. Like it's a, it's a puzzle and, um, and, and there's not, there's never just one thing. Yeah. And people at the end of the day, you know, like the whole body's interconnected and your skin's one of the largest organs on your body. So it makes sense. I remember when I was struggling with my skin, I went to the, like the doctor and they were trying to tell me that absolutely nothing, like no matter what I ate had no effect on my skin. Mm. And I just, mm. and how, how is exactly. it? And like, I was, yeah. I was young and I was like, even intuitively, mm. I was like, that just doesn't sound right. Doesn't it doesn't make sense. sense. Yeah. The same as I can eat as much chocolate as I want, like sugar, no worries, and it'd be fine. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't it even yeah, it's like like you say, to even a child, it does not make sense that uh okay, so we're made up of cells and those cells have to be made out of something and mm-hmm. our body uses the nutrients we eat to make those cells. Like how are you telling me that it's got nothing to do with it? So it's yeah, it's um it's the bane of my life. <laughs> that idea that diet doesn't matter or um or, you know, uh, you go to the doctor with a very visible skin condition, they run those routine tests, the tests come back normal, and they get sent away with no treatment. It's like, it's, there's something visibly wrong here. Like, we, you know, there needs to be further investigation. And, um, you know, there's so many GPs doing a fantastic job. That's not my point. But I think it's just um, a lot of the time, these underlying issues are not being thoroughly investigated as they should be. Mm, just likes that sort of depth and understanding so you do yeah. obviously diet does play a big role in acne and skin conditions and stuff so what would you sort of recommend people you know eating to maintain a healthier diet and healthier skin complexion yes so um there's sort of two sides to this because sometimes I have clients come in who legitimately eat better than me like they eat right. <laughs> more vegetables Perfect. like um yeah. Yeah, just like the perfect diet. Like I cannot fault their diet and they put me to shame and um, and they still have acne. So there's going to be people who are doing everything right and unfortunately there's just something else going on. Like it's never one thing. It's never just a diet. Mm-hmm. Um, however, if I do have clients come to me who haven't really addressed the diet or done much, much research into the diet side of things, um, there's some foundational things that I always recommend. So in terms of, and I'm just going to focus because I do focus on post pill acne. Um, I'm going to, all my answers are going to be, you know, (laughs) leaning towards um, that situation. But with um, post pill or hormonal acne, um, one really important thing is to get that blood sugar regulation right. So when our blood sugar is out of balance, we're likely to be feeling, you know, hangry, dizzy, dizzy, irritable, 
nauseous, brain foggy, if we're, if we're going too long without eating or if we're crashing off, you know, a really carb rich meal, like, you know, you have a big pasta lunch and suddenly you like need to go to sleep. So, um, so getting that blood sugar balance is really uh, important because if we're having big peaks and crashes in our blood sugar mm-hmm. levels, we're going to be stimulating the production of um, androgens like testosterone um, yeah. when our sh- blood sugar is peaking and when it's dropping to compensate and like try and reestablish some balance, the body will release stress hormones. Mm-hmm. So having that um, up and down, you know, really peaking, crashing blood sugar levels is just going to exacerbate the issue and, and feed into that cycle of, uh, of hormonal imbalance. So getting that blood sugar balance is really, really important. Mm-hmm. And for that, I recommend eating you know, um, regular nutrient dense meals, no skipping meals, having, um, you know, small meals every two or three hours instead of three massive meals or, you know, skipping mm-hmm. breakfast. Um, and again, making sure that you have a, um, a balanced uh, meal in terms of your macronutrients. So making sure that there's a source of protein there, there's a source of healthy mm-hmm. fats there, um, as well as like your complex carbohydrates and, and leaning more towards complex carbohydrates from vegetables um, brown rice, that kind of thing, instead of simple carbohydrates from bread, pasta, like the traditional carby foods. Mm-hmm. So um, those are following a low GI, what's called a low GI diet, which is kind of what I've just described, mm-hmm. um, with, that's going to have a more sustained release of energy. will stop that, that blood sugar from peaking and crashing yep. and eating regularly so that you're not in that state of hunger and you're not like being driven by sugar cravings and then oh, scoffing the a packet of Tim Tams. Like, and it is the worst because the drive to do that is so strong, even though intellectually you're like, I shouldn't do that. I'm going to feel awful. I'm going to feel guilty. Yeah. It's going to sabotage my skin. Like, but it, that's the nature of blood sugar. So that's really important to get right in terms of diet. Um, and aside from that, um, again, avoiding foods that have these inflammatory proteins that are going to trigger the immune system and lead to the production of inflammation because acne is such a inflammatory illness. It's really important that we're not adding like fuel to the fire. Mm-hmm. Um, so a pretty standard recommendation for me is to eliminate, eliminate your dairy and eliminate um, gluten, mm-hmm. but not just then going and eating gluten-free foods, but just avoiding foods that wheat foods in general, really there's not. Yeah. Yeah. Just um, yeah. Processed wheat refined grain type foods because it's first of all they don't offer much in the way of nutrition um and there's proteins in these foods aside from gluten that are going to have a similar inflammatory effect so um so avoiding the gluten and the dairy and avoiding those uh real sugary simple carbohydrate foods is my standard advice and and veggies like that's about it it's pretty simple just go for your whole foods yeah. Try and eat as close to the original form of the food as you can and um, and enjoy it. And that's about as far as I go with diet most of the time. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed, obviously, you don't want to get your blood sugar crashing and all that sort of stuff. So what do you mm. think about, you know, this sort of trending intermittent fasting for hormones and acne prevention and mm. all that sort of stuff? You know, like skipping breakfast yeah. it seems to be such a popular thing, especially among like a lot of women and stuff that I have around me. Mm everyone's you know Mm. trying this new intermittent fasting from my understanding i don't see how it would be very beneficial you know like yeah 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 long term and and you've hit the nail on the head i i don't recommend it i'm not that into it um i think a lot of the research that's gone into the benefits of fasting um including intermittent fasting has been done on men Mm -hmm. um and men unlike women like men have this 24 hour cycle of of hormone production and women you know we fluctuate over an entire month so we do need um you know complex carbohydrates to keep our our hormone production happening um and and maintain that balance so i'm not much of an advocate of intermittent fasting for women maybe there's um situations and conditions where it would be therapeutic but um for skin i don't really think it's that great because so many of my clients do have blood sugar issues it's really not advantageous to be skipping breakfast, putting the body into a state of fasting, um, which can, you know, further, uh, exacerbate these blood sugar issues. So, um, no, I love a good low GI or protein and healthy fat rich breakfast. And then, yeah, again, making sure you're, you're feeding your body regular meals. It's really important. And I think for most of us, fasting overnight is enough. Like if you finish eating at, um, 8 PM, during the night and you eat breakfast at eight o'clock in the morning, that's still 12 hours of fasting. That's yeah. 12 hours that your body um, has gone without fuel. And so I'm 
um, yeah, I believe in, I believe in feeding the body real food for sure. And so what would you give as like an example, sort of healthy breakfast that one could have to, you know, keep their blood sugar levels stable and, you know, be assisting them on their healing journey? Yeah. So I'm, I like to keep it simple. I love a good porridge. <laughs> I love oh, porridge. me too, man. So, porridge yeah, every day of the week. Every day. <laughs> Same, especially in winter. So, um, so porridge with, like with rolled oats. Mm -hmm. Um, and I just cook mine, you know, I cook my oats with some water and whatever, like milk I've got in the fridge that's non-dairy. Um, so I do a bit of a half and half combination and a little pinch of salt, good, good, like quality Celtic sea salt. I like to cook it in with, Mm -hmm. and then topping, making sure you're pimping up your porridge because obviously oats are carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. They are low GI. So they're going to have that slower release of blood sugar into the bloodstream. So instead of sitting your blood, your, uh, your sugar up like this, like you would with two pieces of white bread and honey. Um, it's a more of a sustained mm-hmm. release. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then making sure that you're topping your porridge with a source of uh, protein or fat. So I like, um, you know, a sprinkling of mixed seeds or a, mm-hmm. some crushed like walnuts or something. I throw some coconut on there. Um, a dollop of tahini or like peanut butter is nice for those fats. So good. Um, or you can do a dollop of yogurt, like whatever you want, but just making sure that you're, you're adding some of a protein and fat source on top there. So I'm loving at the moment, like, um, yeah, coconut, tahini, a drizzle of honey and, um, and, oh, and I add fiber as well. So adding fiber to a meal is another way to slow down that sugar release. So I add a bit of psyllium husk and, um, and some other fiber sure. or just go some good old, like just poached eggs, two poached eggs with, um, a handful of rocket or a handful of spinach or, um, a bit of, you know, a few slices of avocado, just whatever just simple food yeah whatever yeah it doesn't have to be like fancy granola or anything no and often yeah the granola mm. can be filled with lots of sugar and stuff like that so yeah. much sugar and so, oh, so like, expensive <laughs> yeah you, yeah you don't even realize how much goes into it either until you like go to mm. make i've gone to make it myself once and you're like oh my god like so much <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And the recipe's like, okay, now add half a cup of um, honey or maple syrup and bake it in the oven. And I'm like, this is a dessert. Like, it's, it's fine, but sweet. it's so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I love adding berries and stuff on the top of my porridge too. Mm. Like all those seeds. Like yes. Seeds and all that good yum. Stuff. Yeah, yum. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Or some stewed apples. Yum. in Because it's obviously winter, I'm going like the more seasonal food. So I've been like stewing up some rhubarb and apple and then popping that a a few spoons of that on top. Yeah. It's going down really well. What a treat. And so you Mm. mentioned earlier about, you know, the different locations that you notice your clients have and what that relates to in the different Mm -hmm. problems that you need to address in the body. So that's a thing that like the skin mapping, if someone say had acne on their forehead versus their cheek, their chin, it means different it can sort of relate to different areas of the body that need to be worked on. Uh, in my experience. Yeah. So you yeah. see, you start seeing certain patterns and it is mm-hmm. a really um, traditional concept. And I think it's um, uh, probably an originally a, a Chinese medicine concept. So um, there is, I, I, I mean, I do see patterns. So what I tend to see is, and again, it's got to do with um, how the acne is presenting as well, because if you have suffered acne, you'll know that you can get these real deep, blind painful like mm-hmm. cystic lesions that never really come to a head and they're no, so they're sore and they stay there for weeks at a time yeah, yeah. They, they just sit there oh. um and then you can get um breakouts of more superficial little white-headed pimples that pop up the day after you've you know had a, a big sugar day or something like that and the next day you've got all these little white heads and then they're gone two days later so it does present in different ways and so that's also a bit of a clue but in terms of um the face mapping concept yeah i do tend to see um more hormonal acne along the jawline and chin and the chest and the back. And, and this is because the, uh, the pilosebaceous unit, which is the, um, the little unit of the, the hair follicle and the oil gland that acne sort of erupts from, these are really sensitive to changes in hormones, like especially testosterone. So there is that pattern on the jawline um, and chin, especially if there's like a bit of excess hair growth going on in these areas as well. And same with the, the chest and the back. Mm-hmm. Um, neck, I see a lot in when, the, when acne is being driven by either stress or like sluggish lymphatic flow, because we do have all these, um, lymphatic channels and veins and, um, vessels sort of in the base of the neck. If that sort of gets clogged up and it's not moving through, we get this sort of overflow of, um, mm-hmm. of stagnant, 
like congested lymph, yeah, which can affect the neck. Really? Yeah, lymph is a um, yeah, congested lymphs are really a uh, big one, especially for women who have had perfect skin all their lives, and then suddenly mm-hmm. they're an adult and they start developing acne, and they're like, "What?" <laughs> you know, <laughs> honey. Um, you know, they they you hit twenty five or whatever, and suddenly you've got acne. Um, so adult acne, when there's no history mm. of like hormonal contraception or anything like that, can be um, a real lymphatic condition. Mm-hmm. Um, and then what else have we got? So cheeks being very um in I, I find when there's a lot of systemic inflammation going on the cheeks are often affected with those big red painful um lesions um also if people are sleeping on the same side and they're not changing their pillowcases things like that and they're only breaking yeah, out on one side of the face like hey, yeah there's so yeah there's so many um different variables going on um and uh and for me like i always whenever i had acne it was about from like here down like i forehead's always been perfect <laughs> like it was just the bottom yeah. of my face so then you start thinking okay well what's going on there um so yeah so it's, it's super interesting everyone's everyone's different but you do start to see patterns yeah so if um if someone's trying to improve their skin from like the beginning and they just don't know where to start and they're just you know really wanting to get sort of improvements but as like a broad sort of recommendation what would you say to someone who, you know, is a bit lost and they're just wondering what they should do to start their skincare. And- yeah. So hmm, this is probably not what everyone wants to hear, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> go <laughs> on. Go get, like, personal, you need to go and get personalized advice because yeah. um, there's nothing more frustrating and demoralizing than um, not knowing what you're doing, trying and dabbling in different, you know, different areas and maybe spending 20 bucks here on something and 30 bucks there on a different, you know, pill and, you take it for two weeks and nothing happens and you know um, your skin gets worse and you if you don't understand what you're doing find someone who does yeah. in saying that again there's those foundational things that everyone can do and that's um, focusing on giving yourself like a six to eight week period of um, eliminating all those inflammatory foods so sugar gluten dairy being mm-hmm. the big three um, and you'll find that when you are focusing on avoiding these uh, food sort of, I'm not going to call them food groups, but you know, these certain foods, you naturally start to include more vegetables in your diet and you naturally start to include more nutritious food because suddenly you're like, okay, well, what can I eat? I can eat, you know, all this this good food. A lot of stuff. Yeah. 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 So in, in avoiding those, um, those inflammatory foods, you start including a lot more of the nutritious stuff, which is going to increase your, um, your fiber, your, you know, your B vitamin intake, your antioxidant intake, mm-hmm. which are all anti-inflammatory as well. Um, and, and just by removing some of that processed, um, crap, basically, um, you know, you're also going to be taking care of your blood sugar levels and your, um, your stress hormone production. So, and your gut health, like, so I guess diet would be where I'd recommend to start and, and giving yourself time because remembering if you do sit, if you do fall in, you know, our age group of 20, 30 year old, uh, year old women, our skin cell turnover rate is going to be, you know, six to eight to 10 weeks, depending on, you know, other factors. So you need to give stuff a chance to to work. You you can't Mm. try something for a couple of weeks and go, oh, that didn't work. Um, You know, give up. So needing to be really consistent and, um, and not just cutting down to dairy three times a week or, you know, just with dinner or that's not going to cut it. Um, The proteins in dairy, same with the proteins in wheat, they can actually sit, they can take 36 to 48 hours to be eliminated from the body. So if we're having, one or two serves every couple of days, it's still going to be enough to have a, a cumulative effect um, mm-hmm. and to be affecting um, our physiology. So important to give it a go. Um, That's um, Yeah. So, I mean, again, it's really individual. And again, it's going to depend what your drivers are, but diet's never a bad place to start. Yeah, right. Because I, yeah. I, I've, you know, and you don't want to have to put it up, put up with it for any longer than what you already have. It's just so much better mm-hmm. to seek some like professional advice and get, you know, the proper yeah. treatment because otherwise, you know, the scarring yeah. continues and it really, really mm-hmm. affects your confidence stuff like this. Like, Oh, I know. I know. I know. It took me like two, two years to deal with myself. I could have just gone and paid someone, <laughs> you know, and I, I wouldn't have suffered and I would have learned everything a lot quicker than what it took me. And the thing is like, I do get, 
um, you know, I'll get people messaging me on social media and things and they'll tell me what's going on and, you know, I'll try and encourage them to book in and I don't hear back. And then yeah. six months later they book in and we sort it out for them in like a cup, you know, <laughs> in like, you know, I've had out like really that. quick responses. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, it's so obvious and they just need, you can't treat yourself. Like even the best naturopaths don't try and treat themselves. They, they go and find someone else because there's just too much going on. There's too much subjective information. It's like, Oh, well, was it, um, oh was it the oh, gym? Yeah. yeah. Was it that thing I ate? Was it this? Was it the stress? Sometimes you need someone to come in and have that like external view and, and really just nail it for you. And I know that that helped me when I did eventually get around to getting some help. It was like, oh, of course, <laughs> how did I not see that? Yeah. yeah. And it's someone as well to, you know, look at all the habits and stuff that you've like subconsciously do and that you've created and say like with something like this, instead of taking some sort of medication, you want to be able to prolong it long term. Um, and, you know, to be able to sustain your clear skin throughout your whole life. So it's really beneficial to talk to someone professional so that you can yes. make those adjustments into your lifestyle. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And the goal is to always be able to maintain um, through diet and lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, you've got to think about, yes, there are some medications like pharmaceutical medications that you know will will clear your skin like the pill or um or antibiotics or accutane or whatever it is but at some point you're going to want to come off that and if you haven't gone in and done that underlying work the problem's still going to be there mm. um and often it comes back with a vengeance so so yeah what would you say to someone who's you know looking at going on these medications and maybe the pill or accutane or something like that for their acne um, I would say it's completely up to you, but make sure that you're informed before you make your decision. And if you don't feel like you're being presented with all the information, if you have questions, um, get a second opinion, your health professionals, including me, including a GP, whoever it is, um, they work for you and you're entitled to, um, to informed consent, which is, I'm really passionate about informed consent because I don't believe that, um, women are being correctly informed of how these medicines work what the risks are and um what's what's the long-term plan going to be so um so i would recommend if you're considering it if there's something in the back of your head and some people are always going to go down the conventional route and that's fine that's completely yeah. a personal decision and i also do have clients that i support while they're on the conventional treatment so we do we support the body while people are taking antibiotics or um or accutane or whatever uh, or the pill because sometimes the pill doesn't clear it up completely either. So there's always support available. I'm not um, 100% one way or the other. I think it's very individual. I just am really passionate about making sure that people are educated when they when it comes to choosing treatment. Mm -hmm. So um, what was the question again? <laughs> what, what would I what would I say? What would you recommend? Um, I would, yeah. yeah. What would I recommend? So I'd recommend getting a second opinion and just making sure that it's something that you really want to do and doing doing your research and if you're confused, if you don't understand what you're reading, if you're finding there's a lot of misinformation, um, it's really worthwhile getting advice from someone who knows what they're talking about. Yeah, yeah, oh, definitely. And yes, please do yourself a favor. You don't have to put up with it. You don't, and I feel like, you know, with skincare and stuff like this, it's not something that you actually think about until it's something that affects you. And then it really starts to affect your confidence and stuff like that too. Yeah, if you know anyone else, like this information is priceless if people know exactly what to do to help their skin and stuff like that. Yeah, and especially if you're, yeah, if you're not used to dealing with it, I think like it, it gets to a point, I mean, it's going to affect your self-esteem and your confidence, usually no matter what, like there's, you'd be very few people who it wouldn't affect because, you know, it's on your face. Your face is the first thing that people look at, whether you like it or not. Um, and, and yes, you do not have to suffer or put up with it forever. It's not, yeah, it's common, but it's not normal. Mm. And so when you're talking about the lymphatic drainage just before, do you have, is that, can people enhance their lymphatic drainage and stuff through exercise? Mm, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love this topic. Love yeah. this topic. So there is a, um, a video on a video on my Instagram under the IG. IGTV section mm -hmm. where I take people through how to perform a self lymphatic drainage massage for their face and neck. Mm -hmm. So people can go and watch that. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, we need to remember that the lymphatic, this is something that 
most people don't even know exists. So just how much detail would you like? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, go, go, it, yeah. Go so, wherever you like. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I'm keen to learn myself. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so the lymph is um, basically it's the clearish watery type fluid that kind of like will weep out of a cut if you mm -hmm. accidentally, you know, if you cut yourself kind of lightly before it gets mixed in with blood, you might see sort of some clearish um, exudate. And lymph is... Uh, really important for a number of reasons, but I like to think about it like the sewage system of the body, of the skin, sorry. Right. Um, so you've got this whole network of lymphatic vessels kind of runs parallel to the cardiovascular system of like mm -hmm. arteries and veins that pump blood around the body, but they're, they're separate. So lymphatic vessels pump lymph around the body and eventually all lymph will drain down to the liver where it will be detoxified and cleared. So lymph is responsible for uh, removing like uh, cellular debris and toxins and um, dead cells and um, basically just physiological wastes away from the skin and all, all the tissues of the body really um, mm. and getting get, and returning those to the liver to be cleared. So the main difference between the lymphatic system and the cardiovascular system is that the lymphatic system doesn't have a heart to pump it. So it's all just going to sit there unless we move our bodies and we compress those lymphatic vessels and get that lymph moving ourselves. So it has to be manual. Yeah. Um, yeah. So aside from, um, you know, like that sewerage system analogy of like clearing all that crap out of the, the skin and tissues, mm -hmm. the lymphatic system is also really important for our immune system function because a lot of our white blood cells will, um, will travel around the body in the lymph. So the lymph is mainly made up of water. So the one thing you can do to support your lymph is to make sure that you're drinking plenty of fluid, um, water, not just fluid, water. So, so um, staying hydrated, making sure that lymph is a nice watery composition because if it's not, it's going to get stagnant. It's going to get stuck. It's going to get congested. Um, and that's when we start seeing uh, things getting pushed out through the skin because it's not really got anywhere else to go. So um, water is a big one. I, you might have guessed I'm going to go down the exercise line because yeah. again, if we haven't got a heart to pump it, we, mm -hmm. need, um, we need muscle compression to compress those lymphatic vessels and send that lymph towards the liver for clearance. Um, so some, re some of the best lymphatic drainage exercise is um, rebound trampolining. Really random. Oh, I've heard about that. Actually, those, some like, research yeah. on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm keen. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, some of those like, little mm -hmm. kitty trampolines bouncing around yeah. on one of them. Basically anything that gets, um, you know, all your major muscle groups moving. So walking, swimming, um, cycling, um, yeah, trampolining is a great one. Yeah. It doesn't have to be super intense. Um, and uh, yoga is a great one too. So there's, if you YouTube yoga videos for lymphatic drainage, there's um, heaps out there for that. Massage. Um, so all these sort of uh, manual ways of getting the lymph going and making sure that the lymph is a nice watery composition with hydration and avoiding foods that um, contribute to lymphatic congestion. So all our kind of traditionally cold, um, what we think of as mucus forming foods, even though they don't really always produce mucus, but um, cold, damp things like dairy, again, wheat, um, uh, they're the two major ones. Sugar, like it's all the same offenders. <laughs> Just avoid mm -hmm. these. They're, they're Just not keep away from those bad ones. <laughs> Yeah, and then we've got um, we've got there's plenty of again herbal tea blends out there that are supportive. So most of the like the skin blends you'll see will contain herbs that support lymphatic um, drainage. So um, I think that would be the major points around the lymph. Yeah, but lymphatic um, stagnation and congestion is going to be a factor in um, skin conditions from acne to eczema, psoriasis. Um, just your random rashes and um, and lumpy skin, cellulite. Uh, just dull kind of uneven skin tone if you've got little raised lymph nodes up all the time um, or you, you notice that you get a lot of swelling these are all signs that your lymphatic system um, could use a little bit of support yeah that's really good to know actually I'm sure a lot of people yeah. benefit from hearing about that not many people know about yeah. the lymphatic system I feel like it gets forgotten often you know I know it's sad it's so important and I remember I like when I, I yeah when I learned about it um at uni I was like this is amazing how have I not heard about this and like the tonsils are a lymphatic um organ and yeah. they're just whipped out of people <laughs> you know like it's no big deal and I'm just like no so if I get clients who've had their tonsils out I start thinking about yeah okay well how you know what about their lymph what about their lymph nodes because if you remove these 
really important lymphatic organs, um, the lymph has got to go somewhere. So the traffic through our lymph nodes and lymphatic vessels in other areas is going to be increased to, to, um, to make up for it. So yeah, it's a really interesting area. Mm. Um, and I've just got one more quick question before we sort of wrap up and stuff about skincare yeah. and skin products and stuff like that. What do you yeah. recommend people avoiding or people trying and stuff when they're putting and applying mm. topically to their skin, if they're having problems with it specifically? Yeah. 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 So skincare is such a huge, huge topic. Like, Oh it my is. goodness. <laughs> um, and yeah. there's just so many different brands, so many products, so many ingredients out there. Mm. Um, and again, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I am, I'm an expert on the internal side of things. I'm not a, a dermal skin yes. therapist. So on the topical side of things, I usually refer on. So yes. I do have a couple of um, skincare brands that I do recommend to clients. Um, one, uh, but my preference is always, again, because I work with um, individualized treatment for the client as an individual, um, I advise that people go and see a corneotherapist. So this is a, a sort of branch of skin therapy that focuses on building up the integrity of the skin barrier and repairing, um, repairing that skin barrier, which is so often being damaged by, uh, by acne because skin conditions that there, it means, that, you know, the, there's an open wound in the skin. So we need to repair that skin barrier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I refer on to corneotherapists who use Dermavigil's products. That's like my, my preference. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a handful of like retail brands that I recommend as well, um, who are, have been developed by skin therapists and are um, natural and, and um, focus on, again, providing therapeutic, um, nourishing the skin rather than just um, stripping, cleansing, you know, exfoliating, that kind of thing. So I'm, I'm, I'm more about building the skin up rather than um, trying to cleanse it, dry it out, <laughs> um, you know, or scrub away or exfoliate. So I guess, um, I do recommend that people don't scrub their skin and don't try and over exfoliate and obviously avoiding um, endocrine disrupting chemicals and, you know, all those sort of foundational things I can recommend. But again, I love to just send people to someone who knows the, the topical side of things inside out and can really pair up a client with the exact recipe for their skin. Because again, mm -hmm. we can't, there's no one, one size fits all when it comes to skincare. Mm. oh that's yeah that's also really good to know actually I found yeah. for me like the less the better that I really use on my skin mm. I used to be you know I used to get aggravated with my skin from the outside and try you know wash it all away and be like why is this face wash not working da, 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 da. but yeah. yeah it was a it was a rough process to learn but I you know it was painful as well like exfoliating and stuff it's just yeah, yeah. and it's a common it's, it sort of feeds in again to that that misconception that uh you know, things like acne is just a, an external mm -hmm. condition because people feel like they need to, their skin's really oily um, or that's dirty or they have a lot of blackheads or whatever and they're trying to cleanse away that oil. We need to go in and go, okay, well, why is the skin producing so much oil? Why is it, you know, what's driving that? Is that a hormonal issue? Is the skin dehydrated? With, um, you're not getting enough essential fatty acids. So the body's, mm -hmm. um, you know, turning up that oil production. Like, what is it? And how can we stop it <laughs> or, you know, regulate it? not stop it never we never try and suppress what the body's trying to tell us but um instead of just you know drying that oil out or um washing away that oil like we want to try and regulate that oil flow in the first place would be a good example yeah yeah perfect i feel like it's so demonized to be honest like oils on the skin and stuff you know like you don't want to have oily skin mm -hmm. better clear it wash it all this sort of stuff but yeah, it's oh, it's by design. It's important. trying to yeah. protect our skin. You know, it's it's putting down a protective coating. You know, it's um, our yeah, body is always trying to help us. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Literally, it's you. Just misunderstood. <laughs> totally misunderstood. Um, well, yeah. Thanks so much for talking to us today. And You're welcome. Where can people get in contact with you, and what sort of services do you offer for people with these issues? Yeah, so as a naturopath, um, if you've never heard of a naturopath or you don't understand what a naturopath does, um, my role when it comes to skin is to talk to you. We spend about an hour together going through all areas of health from digestion to um, your menstrual cycle and what your hormones are doing and um, how your nervous system is responding to your lifestyle and what your diet looks like and all of these things. So we spend mm -hmm. about an hour 
um, that first initial appointment is going through your health and your, your history, your skin history with a fine tooth comb and working out exactly what's going on, exactly what's driving the issue for you. Um, again, it's going to be different with everyone. Um, and then, and then I do, I help people investigate further. So often we'll do, um, routine blood testing, either through their GP and the bulk billing or, um, functional testing to really nail what's happening with people's hormones or what's happening in their gut microbiome. If there's a lot of digestive issues mm -hmm. going on as well. Um, and then I pull all that whole, um, treasure trove of information together and come up with a, a treatment plan that is going to address these these issues for you um, and that includes a, you know usually a prescription for uh, nutrients or herbal medicines dietary recommendations lifestyle practices and rituals that you can build in um, and then advice on skincare as well and then um, and then I generally see people about once a month until they don't need to see me anymore so um, it's a one-on-one -on -one individualized service mm -hmm. and it's all conducted over zoom and um i guess that pretty much sums it up so it's all about it's all about finding those drivers and helping people understand their skin i'm really passionate about um getting people empowered learning what's going on with their body and um and motivating them to make the changes that they need to to get the results that they want amazing it's such a beautiful thing yeah. that you do and you i'm sure you change so many people's lives for the better definitely on these sorts of topics it's amazing yeah. beautiful yeah we have a lot of fun so People can find me. Um, yeah, I'm very active on Instagram. So <laughs> probably too active on Instagram. So people can find me there um, at clearskin.bylexi. Mm -hmm. And um, also my website, which is www.leximcfee.com. Um, and and you can link reach me through there. Yeah. And I'll link all that in the show notes for everyone who's wanting to get in contact and learn more from Lexi's beautiful Instagram. But yeah, thanks so much for um, cool. coming and talking. Thank you for having me. <laughs>